Hello everyone, it's your girl Cheekies and you've reached the voicemail box for Dear Cheekies. I'm here to give you advice on anything and everything you need help with. Maybe you're going through a breakup, maybe you're having issues with your family, or maybe you need help figuring out how to balance your checkbook or how to start a business. Whatever the case is, I want to hear from you. Remember, these are my thoughts and opinions, and if you're suffering from an issue or hardship, you should seek help from a qualified professional. All right, now go ahead and leave your question at the sound of the beep. You have three new messages. Hi, Cheekies. First of all, congratulations on your Latin Grammy. You deserve this and everything that's coming your way. So, felicidades. And now my question is, I am the youngest of four. My sister is the oldest. Her and I used to be super close, best friends and everything. And I would do everything for her, for her two kids and one of her kids. It's my godson. And ever since I started putting me first and I got into a relationship and finally got married, things have changed. And now she and my nephews don't talk to me. They don't want nothing to do with me. I don't know que cosas les ha metido en sus cabezas, but I recently got a text from my godson saying he's super hurt that I don't talk to him and for me to consider him dead. It really hurts, but just wondering if you have any advice, how do I figure out the toxic that my sister has towards my nephews, towards me. How do I rebuild that relationship? Thank you for listening. Oh, Jessica, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's hard. And I can hear the pain in your, in your voice. And thank you for, you know, congratulating me for my Latin Grammy. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, look, this one's tough because it's family and it's your sister. And you guys know I love my siblings so much. It doesn't sound like you've given up and lost hope, which is good. Unfortunately, I don't know your sister, but it sounds like she got used to you being available and always being there. And now that you're not because you're putting yourself first, which I think is a great thing and you found someone that loves you, I think your sister should be happy for you. But for some reason, she's not. I mean, oh, there's always two sides to a story. Look, um, I would say try to say, even if he said consider me dead, Just say, I'd love to speak to you in person. If you would give me the opportunity to hear me out, I'd like to hear you out. Let's have a conversation. I think that's the best thing you could do is at least try, even with your sister. Say, hey, I don't know what's going on. I don't want to have this tension. I'd like to hear you out. If I did anything to offend you, I'd like for you to tell me in person and for you guys to talk about it. Hablando se entiende la gente. Now, if that doesn't work, then that's where you have to just respect their decision and leave it in God's hands and move on with your life. As long as you know I tried and that door was shut, it's okay. At least you tried. You knocked on that door and it didn't open, but you can go on with your life at peace and knowing that, hey, this is what I do because one time I had a falling out with my cousin and she had a reason to be upset with me, absolutely. And she didn't want to talk to me and I said, look, the doors to my heart and to my home will always be open for you when you are ready to talk to me. And thank goodness, after a while, after a year, we started talking again. So I think if you just leave that door open, leave your door open, even if they don't want to let you in, I think that's great. Again, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I'm happy for you, though. You found someone that loves you. You're in a relationship that's beautiful. Y la gente que realmente te quiere y quiere lo mejor para ti, they're going to be happy for you. Van a estar contentos, and they're going to support you. So I hope it works out, though. I really do. I hope she answers, and I hope you guys get to talk, okay? I'm sending you a big, big hug, Jessica. Thank you for, for your question, and I'm going to be praying for you. All right, so our next question is from Gia. Hi, Cheekies. I just wanted to let you know I do enjoy your podcast every Monday morning. The only question I have for you would be I'm struggling where my life is at at the moment. I have been divorced for the past three years now, and I had to live back with my parents. And the only thing that I do sometimes get embarrassed about when I do go on dates, when they ask me where I live and I tell them I live with my parents. Unfortunately, I can't afford to move out right now because of how expensive everything is. I just wanted to get your feedback and see what your advice would be. Thank you. Okay, Gia. Well, first of all, 
that is nothing to be ashamed of. I think after the pandemic and everything that's going on in the world right now, everything is very expensive. So you need to be patient with yourself and compassionate with yourself in regards to that. And whoever you're dating is going to understand that. And I think the best thing here is always be honest. Don't start a relationship or anything with a lie. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to say, oh, I'm staying with my mom just for a little bit. Like just say, you know what? Times are tough. I moved back with my mom. I feel safe there. I'm happy there. Because what better than to live with your parents? I think I would have probably stayed with my mom forever. I'm not even going to lie. Hopefully he has a house you guys can hang out at. You know, I don't know. But I think the best thing you could do is just be honest, babe. Just straight up. And don't be ashamed of that because we all start somewhere. And sometimes, yes, we have to take two steps back to be able to leap five steps forward. It's okay. Just be patient. If the guy likes you, he's not going to care where you live, girl. Like, honestly, like he's going to say, okay, let me work hard. And I like this woman so that I can buy her a house so we can buy a house together, you know? So I'm going to be praying for that guy to come. Okay. And if he gets mad over you living with your mom, something wrong with him. You don't want that boy. Okay. And that's a boy. So anyways, I hope that helped Gia. (laughs) And don't be ashamed. Living at your mom's is amazing. I wish I had my mommy so I can live with her too. Anyways, okay, sending you a big kiss. <laughs> All right, guys, our final caller didn't leave a name, so I'm not sure who you are, but let's hit the play button and see what the question is. Hi, Jiggies. My question is, what do you think about religious? In my situation, my family is Christian, and my mom really believes in Christianity and all of those things and right now she really wants me to go to church with her and stuff but I don't really I believe in it but I don't really like going to church there's a lot of things you can and cannot do and it's really hard so what do you think okay my lovely anonymous caller here leaving a question Okay, that's tough. It's tough because that's your mom. We have to respect them, you know. And I think it's a little harder, especially in our Latin culture, because it doesn't matter how old you are, you're always going to be a little girl in their eyes. You know what I mean? So it's like, a la mamá se respeta, and whatever they say, and I totally get that. But little by little, she has to also understand that you have to live your life, you know, and make your own decisions. Uh, maybe you should compromise with her. Maybe like, maybe I can't go every Sunday, you know, maybe I'll go once every month to keep her happy, to keep her at peace. Be like, look, mom, no me gusta, creo en Dios, no ando haciendo cosas malas, I'm a good girl, but I don't want to go to church every Sunday, you know, but I'll go once a month with you. You know what I mean? Like, I think compromising would be good, especially because she's your mom and it's okay. I know we're not going to get into it, but I, I feel you on like, you know, sometimes churches, not all of them, some, you know, I've had bad experiences myself. So sometimes it just doesn't feel right, you know, and that's okay. But that's the best advice, honestly, I can give you, babe, is just maybe compromising with her and going once in a while, just not because she's telling you, but just to give her peace. You know what I mean? Darle ese gusto a tu mamá. That's what makes her happy. So sometimes we just got to give and take a little bit. You feel me? So that's it because it's a little tough there, you know? But uh, thank you for your question, and muchísimas gracias a Jessica, a Gia, to our lovely anonymous caller. I hope you all have a really great week. I'll be here next Wednesday answering even more questions. You can submit yours at speakpipe.com slash podcast. Ya saben, los amo. Besitos. This is a production of iHeartRadio and the My Cultura Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at My Cultura Podcast and follow me, Chiquis, that's C-H-I-Q-U-I-S. For more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. 